Um, okay, uh, back in the 1950s, uh, Professor Phillips, London School of Economics, um, noticed a connection, a correlation between the speed at which wages rise, or had been rising, and the, and the size of unemployment. He didn't say one was causing the other, he just saw the connection. And he noticed, when he plotted the uh, data from the previous hundred years, he noticed that in those years when wages were rising fast, there was very low unemployment. And he noticed that in years when there was very high unemployment, wages did not rise fast, in fact, sometimes they even fell. And so when he plotted this, and then plotted the line of best fit, he found that there was a curve that was something like this. In other words, there's a lot of action up here, there's a lot of action down here, but there's nothing up here. We had this kind of relationship, inverse relationship, between the change in wages and unemployment. Now, people after him were interested by this, and they, they made an ad adaptation to this. Uh, they, 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 they got rid of this change in wages, and they, they turned it into inflation. They said that, and, and you know, it's, it's oh yeah, inflation. And it's, it's an understandable connection because changes in money wages represent increasing labour costs for firms. And increasing labour costs for firms, of course, means increasing total costs for firms, especially back then when, when, when you know, firms are more labour intensive. So increasing costs for firms means they would put up prices, and that's inflation. So with a slight adaptation, the Phillips curve was born. And it suggests that there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. When inflation is high, unemployment is low. And when inflation is low, unemployment is high. And this is very bad news for policymakers in, 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 the, uh, in the 60s, 50s and 60s, because it implied that two of the key macroeconomic objectives of government to achieve low inflation and to achieve low unemployment were mutually Excluded, uh, exclusive. They, they, they couldn't achieve both of them. They'd have to choose which one they were, we were, they were going to aim for and accept that the other one was going to fail. That's bad news. And this actually um, led to the derivation of the, of the Keynesian LRAS curve, because the Keynesian LRAS curve had been drawn like this. Of course, on an ADAS diagram, we have output here and price level here. And so it had looked at something like this, where you, know, you could raise AD and raise AD, and it wouldn't have any effect on price. But once you got to the full employment level of output, any further rise in AD, you couldn't get beyond the, the, the top level of output. But this discovery of Phillips led the, to the redrawing of this curve, so that now the LRAS curve, according to Keynesians, would be, would be drawn something like this. And any rise, or rather any change, between these AD curves um, let's say that AD rose from 1 to 2, well, we get closer to full employment level of output, that's a fall in unemployment, but we'd have to have that trade-off of rising prices, inflation. Likewise, if we shifted from this one to this one, uh, great, we bring prices down, or at least we moderate inflation, but the cost is unemployment. There's the trade-off. So, that's the short-run Phillips curve. Now, let's try and, do, let's try and get to the long-run Phillips curve. A couple of economists... Uh, mostly led by Milton Friedman, um, looked again at this issue and, and decided that there was something... In fact, what they'd been looking at was merely a short-term phenomenon. And, in fact, uh, in the long run, there was a certain level of unemployment, let's uh, put it here, which they called the natural rate of unemployment. And it was also called the N-A-I-R-U, um, which, uh, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, I'm just going to rewrite that here. It's also the N-A-I-R-U, and I'm going to explain that at the end of the video. Uh, they said that, that in the long run, you will always, always be at this level of unemployment. And that in the long run, there is no trade-off. The long run Phillips curve, there is no trade-off. Inflation can be wherever it's going to be, but the unemployment will always come back to rest at this level of unemployment, this percentage of unemployment. And here's how they said it would happen. They said that, imagine we start here, we're, the, we're on the economy at this point here, let's call it A. They said that, imagine there's a rise in aggregate demand. Now, aggregate demand rises. When aggregate demand rises, at first there'll be a fall in unemployment, as workers are 
even existing workers are made to work extra time or, or there's a pickup in the economy. And, and at the same time, this extra overtime that workers have to work, or it, it drives up prices. So initially we can move off the, 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 um, the, lo the natural rate of unemployment. We can move up the short run Phillips curve. There is a trade-off in the short run. But they said that um, you know, as, wages, as workers find themselves in a position to bid up their wages, and they bid up their wages, Work, workers will no longer be in such demand. Now, if I showed you this on a, if I can draw a little LRAS uh, AD diagram here, um, there's the, the classical view of the LRAS curve. And if AD rises from AD1 to AD2, at first we go from here to here, there is more output, but as wages are driven up, we have a new SRAS curve here, we come back to that same level of output. So. It's only temporary, we're knocked off this level of output. So in other words, it's only temporary, we're knocked off the natural rate of unemployment. Yes, unemployment falls at first. But the point is this. Do we slip back down to A, or do we come across to, let's call this point C? And that depends upon money illusion. If when the workers, who are now in extra demand, enter negotiations to bid up their wages, if they do not understand that there is currently inflation, that prices are rising, if they only bid up their wages in nominal terms, it's possible that we would slip back down to here. But if they anticipate inflation, if they do not suffer from money illusion, and they bid up in real terms, in other words, they say, well, first of all, we want this, let's say, let's call it 3%. We want the 3% anyway because of inflation, and we want a real pay rise on top of that. If, for instance, 3% is expected and becomes embedded into the economy, then the economy will return to here. They bid up their, t their wages in real terms. 3% becomes standard in the economy. Everyone was working towards 3% inflation, expecting it. And, and they get a real wage rise, and that really reduces uh, the number of workers, and that uh, pushes unemployment back up. And then we're on a new short-run Phillips curve, PC2, which... Uh, which uh, is, is, is again still on the natural rate of unemployment, but is uh, at 3% now, prices are rising steadily at 3%. And this can happen again, and again, and again. And so this always comes back, wherever the inflation is, we always come back to the long run Phillips curve at the natural rate of unemployment. Well, um, one further point, this Naira, it's getting a bit messy there now, let me just clean this up a bit. This level of unemployment is also called Nairu, the non-inflation, accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. It's the rate of unemployment at which you're at equilibrium. Inflation, let's say you're at this point, inflation is here, let's say it's 10%. Inflation will stay at 10% until something else pushes off this point, but this is an equilibrium point. In, clearly, 10% inflation is expected by everyone. It's built into all negotiations. But it stays at 10%. So the inflation is non-accelerating. It's the only rate of unemployment at which inflation doesn't change. Inflation doesn't change, not prices. Prices are going up by a steady speed, 10%. But prices are not going up more or less quickly. So, this is the only unemployment rate at which in fact, now, and that's why, of course, the uh, classicists would advocate cuts in AD. Cut in AD will raise unemployment. Let's say you're here, bring it down to here, because unemployment rises, and uh, workers have to bid down their, uh, lower their wage expectations if they want to find work in the classical model, and they find work again, but that causes uh, costs and prices to fall, and maybe we'll come back here, and we're on a lower PC. So they would, um, followers of Friedman, the classicist view, the neoclassicist view, monetarist view, whatever you want to call it, they would see that ultimately you're always at this level of unemployment and that it's better to cut AD because with cuts in AD we can move down short run Phillips curves and get to lower inflation without causing any permanent unemployment damage. They'd also advocate supply side policies that can shift the whole of the long run Phillips curve inwards and lower the natural rate of unemployment.